Welcome to this course, Introduction to Cybersecurity Literacy. This is Lesson 18, Layers of Defense Against Malware. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the layers of defense that will help to protect you from a malware attack. We will introduce five layers of defense, backing up data, using a firewall, installing software patches, using antivirus software, and user education. None of these layers is particularly powerful by itself, but taken together, they constitute a firm defense. As long as you use a computer, you will always be at some risk of malware attack, but implementing these five layers will make that risk vanishingly small. Layer number one is backing up your data. Let's imagine for a moment that this box represents your computer system, and these gold bars represent all of the valuable things that you keep on your computer personal information, photographs, music, and other things like that. In most cases, it's easy to make backup copies of digital property. Digital storage is cheap, so it's a good idea to make copies of your important files and to keep those copies somewhere away from your computer. Somewhere safe. That way, even if your computer is compromised by some sort of malware infection, you'll still have your backup files to fall back on. You have several options for making backups of your data. Some of the most popular include removable disks, such as CDs and DVDs, removable flash memory devices, such as thumb drives, external hard drives, and of course, web-based cloud storage services. Any of these could be an excellent choice depending on your personal storage needs. Layer number two is using a firewall. Let's say that once again, this box represents your computer system, this cloud represents the internet, and this friendly face represents all of the millions of friendly people, machines, and organizations that you can interact with on the internet. Normally, you send your information or your requests for information out to these friendly entities, and they send back information or web pages of their own. This is normally a benign transaction. But not everybody on the internet is friendly. Some of them are out to attack other users. This skull will represent those attackers who wish to place malware onto other people's computers. Now, this situation raises an important question. If we can send information to other computers on the internet, and if other people can send information back to our computers, what's to stop the bad guys from sending malicious information straight into our computers and leaving us with a nasty malware infection? The answer is that there's a layer of defense between your computer and the internet. This layer is called a firewall. Firewalls may be either hardware devices, software programs, or both. In either case, firewalls are responsible for screening the information that comes and goes from your computer. Firewalls block information coming into your computer from the outside. When you send out a request for information, the firewall keeps track of where you sent that request. When you get a response from that entity, the firewall lets the information back through to your computer. But if somebody tries to send unrequested information directly into your computer, the firewall will block it. You should be aware of two important limitations inherent in firewalls. First, a firewall cannot help you if you request information from a malicious source. If you initiate contact with a malware attacker, then your firewall might let a piece of malware right back onto your computer. The second limitation is that firewalls are never perfectly foolproof. It's relatively uncommon for attackers to send unrequested malware through or around firewalls, but it does happen every now and again. Despite these limitations, firewalls are an indispensable cybersecurity tool you should be sure that you're running a firewall whenever your computer is connected to the internet. Layer three is installing software patches. When malware programmers design malware to attack your computer, they're generally attacking the software that runs on your computer. All software has security weaknesses, even if we don't know what they are yet. That's why we're using a dotted line to represent the boundary around your computer, to emphasize that there are gaps. Malware attacks must exploit one of these software weaknesses in order to succeed. Many malware attacks are unsuccessful. We may never even know that they occurred because they failed to exploit a weakness. 
For example, malware that is written for PCs will be ineffective against users who use Mac computers because Macs and PCs have different weaknesses. But malware programmers are constantly searching for security weaknesses in popular software. When they find them, they write new malware that exploits those weaknesses. But legitimate software developers are also constantly searching for security weaknesses in their products. When they find them, they release security updates called patches. Patches cover the known weaknesses in a program so that attackers can't exploit them. This is why it's important to install software updates for your computer whenever they become available. Layer 4 is using antivirus software. In the world of cybersecurity, antivirus software functions kind of like a guard dog. A dog can learn to detect people and to distinguish between people based on the way that they smell. Similarly, antivirus software can detect and distinguish between good and bad software based on the lines of code present in that software. When antivirus software detects a line of code associated with a known malware threat, it takes action. Antivirus software can alert you to the presence of malware, sometimes before your computer is even infected. It's kind of like a guard dog who begins barking when intruders approach its territory. Antivirus software can also recognize malware attacks and block them, kind of like a guard dog that attacks an intruder before he enters the house. And if you do get a malware infection on your computer, antivirus software can sometimes remove it for you, like a guard dog who chases an intruder out of your house. Of course, antivirus programs aren't perfect. There will always be a few strains of malware that they're unable to detect, and many people find that certain antivirus programs slow down their computers. But we still recommend that you run an antivirus program on your computer and make sure that the program is up to date so that it can smell the most recent malware threats. Layer number five is user education. So far, we have focused mainly on your computer, but we think it's important to also focus on you, the user. You are, after all, the person who is under attack, and we'd like to discourage the idea that you're just a passive participant in cybersecurity. It's better to think of yourself as an active participant, and the more you learn about cybersecurity, the more purposefully you can act. Furthermore, the better you understand cybersecurity, the better you will be at distinguishing friend from foe in the first place, and the better you will be at recognizing the tactics that malware attackers will use to get malware onto your computer. So that's our fifth level of defense. Users should arm themselves with knowledge. If you're watching these videos, then you're on the right track. Okay, that's all I have for you for now on malware defense. To review, we covered five layers of defense. Backing up data, using a firewall, installing software patches, using antivirus software, and user education. None of these layers is very effective on its own, but taken together, they constitute a strong cyber defense strategy. In the next video, we'll begin discussing web browsing, and we'll talk about some of the security issues that users face when they're surfing the web.